The music industry is used to witnessing prodigious talent, you know, such as five-year-old pianists playing Chopin preludes as far as their little hands can stretch, or violin prodigies wrapping their fingers around Paganini etudes, and so on. However, I cannot really say that I've ever in my lifetime come across an individual who epitomizes what I imagine a prodigy and a genius to be, whilst embracing such childlike curiosity and playfulness, experimentation and fun. And I'm talking about right across a myriad of musical genres, such as jazz and pop, funk, a cappella and classical rhythm and blues. But the what if ethos definitely applies to my guest. And as a creative artist and innate communicator, he's so extraordinary at so many things that I can honestly say he is a planet all of his own. And as a recent multiple Grammy winner, it has even been mentioned that he needs his own Grammy category. It's an incredible privilege for me to have this opportunity to chat to, and yes, he could create a hundred different ways of playing a drum roll from a tabletop and each one magical, Jacob Collier. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jacob, thank you so thanks. much for saying all of that. That's so oh. wonderful to hear away you go it's just such a privilege to have this this chance i'm amazed at everything in in the background you've got your wonderful piano there that's oh so thank you yeah thank, thanks magic a lot. has I mean, happened in my in my lovely room at home it's um, absolutely lovely now we know that there's no such thing as perfection but in my mind you epitomize the perfect musician because you ooze that sense of curiosity and you know you keep experimenting there is this playfulness and the musicality the technique and the knowledge and i think the immense musical and business savviness those are all things that you have in abundance but somehow i feel that you always make us listeners feel as though we're actually composing with you and we're living the piece of music with you and that you know no two performances could or should be the same it's like a mm. living entity right there before our very eyes and i'm just curious you know how this has all come about is it something that's just so innate to you is it something that you experienced as a youngster and what was your musical landscape growing up fantastic question well i suppose what i'd say to that is I was tremendously lucky to be brought up by my mum, who was extremely open-minded uh, about a lot of things, and she gave me a space to play. And I think that was that was the the biggest asset of my kind of childhood space was being able to play without really any constraints. And so, I was able to be interested in and spend time with um, perfecting or imperfecting whatever I, I sort of felt necessary. And so it was Stevie Wonder and Prince and Earth, Wind and Fire and sort of Beck and Bjork on the one hand, and then there was Bartok and Britten and Stravinsky on, on, on the other side. And I think to, to my mum, and to, therefore to me, there wasn't a tremendous amount of difference between these two sort of landscapes, or many more than two, like, you know, different different landscapes. And, and the, the immense privilege I think I had was this room that I'm talking to you from right now, which is really the, the room in which I learnt music as a one, two, three-year-old. Mm. Um, and I was always I was always very fascinated by organising things, you know, for example, into symmetrical patterns and shapes I found appealing and things being as, as balanced as, as possible. And, and so over the course of my teenage years, I really um, invested a lot of time in trying to, I suppose, in, invert the direction of the way I was perceiving music from going in to going out, coming out. And so all the different flavours and styles that I was so sort of enamored with as a listener I would attempt to sort of patchwork together these these different you know these different components and see if I could make sort of chemical reactions that that got me excited mm. and that was really that was a very interesting process and I, I think that it's the kind of thing that doesn't happen in one go I can't say I sort of strolled into my music room fully formed or anything like that but I do think that um, I was always given the opportunity to, to, to take as many risks as I felt necessary um and was excited by and I, I consistently stretched and was stretched uh, my you know by by the, the music that was around me and, and the, the musicians that were around me and I had a very self-guided process of learning I suppose and it was interesting to me because I was you know I, I was and am today a, a huge you could say perfectionist but I think something interesting happened when I went on tour for the first time and my, my first ever gig was sort of in my first ever official gig was about five years ago now and, and I've 
already done about three or four hundred concerts, whether with a, the, a one man show with a circle of musical instruments or with a, a band as well and with orchestras in tow and things like this. And and there was an interesting thing, I suppose, that I realized having been somebody who always loved to concentrate on energy going into something in a very sort of a precise way where it's like almost like a, a mosaic of things that fit together where everything is, is, is in its exact position and it balances everything else out. Um, to something that was sort of live and breathing and human on stage where obviously you can't say oh, actually this note was you know 31 cents sharp can I just do it again you know you can't do that and so I think there's a real majesty and spontaneous you know sp spontaneous joy about giving that side of things away but you know as an introvert and someone who had concentrated on things and designed experiences based on my reaction to things for so many years live performance was a revelation but it took about a year and a half to really kind of fall in love with it and and now I you know now here I am in late 2020 and I'm, I'm really missing it I'm missing the, the rush of of that kind of energy exchange. But I think what's interesting is that when you say you miss live performance but from a, a, a participator like myself who is watching you virtually with all the the magical things that you've done and also watching uh, the, the live performances that you've done there seems to be the seamless transition between how you perform virtually and how you perform live in that mm. it's equally rewarding because very often when you watch something let's say on youtube a performance mm. of, of of whatever it it can sometimes be a bit draining and and you oh, know yeah. i don't you don't get that emotional pull but for some reason and i'm not quite sure how or why and perhaps we shouldn't try to analyze it because it's just simply you and and the specialness of you but that communication and and the, the very eloquent way that you communicate verbally as well is is extremely powerful and, and I'm just very appreciative that oh, you know we're living well, in this time to experience this incredible growth with you. Thank you so much for saying that. Um, I, 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 I love every every aspect of it I think I love I love the communication over the sort of digital space and as you say it can be draining and I, I think a lot about how to get the sort of experiences that I've sort of uh, subject people to, to to feel as human as possible because you know we're also fatigued by the kind of screen thing mm. and I, I think there are ways of of trying to catch that moment that you feel in real life so often when you're performing of I'm just about to go on stage I'm just about to connect and we're connecting and we're we're sharing a you know we're sharing a space and something's happening here that no one really knows what it is and I don't know what it is either but I'm going to participate in my 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 sort of birthing of it and then you're welcome to be a part you know that that mm. feeling, I think, it, it is possible digitally, but I think it just takes slightly longer than it does in a room. Absolutely. And it's interesting because, um, you know, your mum has been such an important figure, obviously, in your life for obvious reasons. But, but with your whole growth as an explorer of sound, I mean, were there, um, did you have the same kind of feeling towards visual art or, or dance? You know, were you throwing lots of um, pictures or paintings and, mm. and just you know, asked to observe and just, you know, find that connection, the entry point? I think there were there were a myriad of things in, in my world that I was encouraged to look at in a certain way. Um, I, I wouldn't say there was ever really a, a particular pressure to, to consume a particular kind of thing. I mean, even with music, actually, it wasn't like, listen to this and you have to have an opinion or anything like that. I think it was really, it was a, a lovely feeling that you know you can look at anything in your in your life any person or thing or object or space or what, whatever construction or story or whatever in your life and you can kind of you can enjoy it and you can interpret it and you can release it sort of on your own terms from being what it is mm. and that I think is an attitude that I, I would really say that my, my mum was 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 hugely important for kind of um, embedding within my psychology and I think that the amazing thing about it is that I've somehow grown to the ripe old age of 26 and I haven't lost it um, I haven't lost the ability to, to sort of be a child in in my vision mm. um, but it's, you know especially when I'm not kind of overwhelmed with busyness and, and things to do I think there's there's a lovely aspect of life that is very inherent to me yeah. it was in, sort of encouraged to continue um, and mm. I'd, I'd say the same is true for, for both my younger sisters too it's like it's like a way of seeing things which is really um it's it, it, it's really, really wonderful and mm. I, I think that's a really crucial thing and I, I wouldn't say particularly that you know yeah I, I I don't remember sort of falling in love massively for example with visual art as, as a teenager or, or dance but I do remember that I had interesting conversations with people who who were really interested in those things and we we found that we had things in common 
about the way that we saw things like that mm. and so i think that there's there's a lovely sort of marriage that i'm i'm discovering to be possible between people who think in that way in in, in other aspects of sort of you know expressive art and being creative and and someone like myself who's you know very interested in, in music and and i love how possible it is for all these connections to be made and all these parallels to be drawn and and all this art to be created i guess mm. and you've actually uh, said in the past that um children are the wisest among us i mean i yeah. absolutely love that and of course you know sometimes as as music students i mean i remember when uh i was a full-time student and giving a lunchtime recital or something and mm. we were taught how to bow we were actually um, advised how much to smile, can you believe? Don't show your teeth, just just yeah, sort right. of, you know, smile. And of course, <laughs> we were also worried about this bowing aspect before we even played a note. And in fact, no, playing right. the piece was like a bit of a relief, you know? <laughs> and, <laughs> it just seems, yeah, and it just seems that, you know, you're, you're absolutely comfortable, you know, in your own skin, in your own, um, stamp marks, signature, whatever you want to call it, but just in this whole, you know, journey that you're experiencing and you're allowing, you're opening your arms up, up and, and, and allowing us in, you know, I talked about the entry point earlier and mentioned that because it can be quite intimidating if you're thinking about classical music or, or jazz oh, yeah. or, or a cappella or whatever it might be with it. Ah, I don't understand. But you're giving this entry point where you're taking something that's quite familiar that we can easily categorize one way or another and you're ripping the tag off and uncategorizing it and putting hmm. us on this sort of extraordinary journey. I mean, that's what I find very, very fascinating about it all. Oh, that, that's, that's a really nice way of putting it. Um, I, I think for me, uh, there's this thing that I've realised that a lot of people feel, which is this idea of sort of waiting to be qualified enough to get started. You know, it's like, oh, well, one day when I've practised for enough years or I've met enough people or I've, got, you know, got my skills together or whatever, then I'll, you know, then I'll start, you know, start the thing and I'll, I'll start my, you know, building my castle and then I'll you know, invite people to come. And I really think for me, especially in, in the sort of 21st century, I think it's a lovely relief um, the sort of recognize that if yeah, if you are comfortable in your own skin, I I even if not in, in every way, because, you know, I'm not sort of eternally comfortable in my own skin, but I'm definitely willing to be vulnerable to other people and to invite mm. people into the space that I'm growing and and being inspired by and um, trying to sort of discover. And I think that, you know, if you wait until you're ready, then you never do it. Mm -hmm. And I think pe things things just become possible when you start doing them. And I really believe that. And whether it's you know touring the world with a one man show or doing a quadruple album in a couple of years or you know collaborating with an orchestra and a and an a list rapper on the same album you know all these different things I, I think that you know that they, they are they adhere to my particular taste about what I find thrilling and exciting and and I, I like making available the music that I wish existed I mm. like thinking like, I wish this existed oh I might as well make it then you know and I don't think that there's ever a time really if i yeah if, if i were to wait where i would deem myself ready to do it but i think that the more you do it and also the more you practice finishing things finishing a piece or a project or a plan rather than just starting because that was my that was my thing as a teenager i started so many things i didn't finish them but i think if you practice finishing stuff it's it gets really exciting because you think mm. okay well this idea doesn't need to be everything it can just be what it is and then yeah. the next one can be the next part of the process and the next part of the process and so i guess i think of the whole of the whole of the you know this last few years as a sort of one great big pathway that is sort of being paved by each of these each of these different things that I'm concentrating on and being fascinated by so you know there's the directing and editing of the music videos and there's the taking the show on the road and then there's the mixing and the mastering and the production of my albums and the recording and the arranging and the playing the instruments and mm. and then you know obviously there's there's the talking and there's the explaining there's the logic session breakdowns and there's the you know the the, the live streams and the you know collaborations and all, all these different things that i i didn't have a clue about until i just started doing them and, and suddenly they feel like they're part of the same kind of blanket or yeah. you know p pathway that i think is is cool because i i feel like people who who do like to listen to my music don't necessarily um that aren't necessarily there because the music adheres directly to what they really like already i think they might be there because they they trust me and that is really a, a, a thrilling thing to aim for for me and, and something that I believe to be highly sustainable and more sustainable than 
me doing something that people really like again and again and trying to keep it going it's like well i'm going to change completely my whole toolkit my whole scape you know my whole set of interests and and if you'd like to come with me you can but it's all part of the same language and i, I love ex explaining and, and 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 sort of exploring that and it's so interesting that because i think that the whole industry is changing as regards to how people are managed how you know people are are being marketed and so on and i think that you've really pushed the boundaries in that sense and saying well come on listen listen what's inside of yourself and be hmm. daring just try 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 oh yeah, yeah i i suppose i recognize that to an extent with percussion um in, in trying to to get solo percussion uh on the map as it were and and you know there was an awful lot of experimenting going on and a lot of things didn't work um mm. but that didn't mean that you just you know fell into a deep depression or something it meant that yeah. ah well actually that's interesting it didn't work um exactly. and you, you you know you use it as a springboard and i think it's just absolutely um well just incredibly inspiring for very um when I say seasoned musicians, I mean people like myself who have been in the industry for a long time to mm. see this whole thinking process and um, especially in bringing technology and and allowing us to feel the emotion of technology. Mm. Um, you know, the, very often we're fighting with it, but somehow you make it almost like an extension of your limbs and it <laughs> becomes emotional. It, it becomes something that is so integral um, to what we feel is is going to be the thing moving forward. I think that's the goal with tech, isn't it? Because it's so easy to be distracted by it. That's the sort of main danger. But but the, you know, the, there's also just this this horrible weight to it that is so unhuman. And and it's funny, you know, you mentioned perfection, but it's 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 almost like it, it it's it's aligned with this sort of adherence to perfection as the goal. It's like well, you can always quantize or auto tune mm. or sort of. You know correct everything and, and i think that the temptation to do that is really strong and you know in in the world of music production for example i think i you know i i for one have to consciously stop myself from thinking oh but i could just tweak this you know i could just yeah. i could tweak it into oblivion and whatever and i think there therein lies this interesting question about you know what is you know music at its finest is it the music that is absolutely sort of perfect and technically so brilliant and locked in or is it something which does have a bit of kind of flavor to it you know something that has a bit of ambiguity mm -hmm. or yeah you know, or imperfection something a bit messy or wiggly or something about it which i i, mm -hmm. I really think is interesting because you can actually get really perfectionist about about um kind of arranging that scenario you know something that <clears throat> has exactly the right amount of humanity in it mm -hmm. um, and and so i i think that's been a something i've struggled with recently is just thinking well you know, if, if, it, if it's not about, for example, something being fully quantized, but by which I mean, you know, every every rhythmic beat is, is rounded to, to the nearest subdivision, absolutely 100 percent. So, yeah. you know, if you have something like Sambo, which is this thing that rolls like an egg, you know, and suddenly it's quantized. It's like a, it sounds like techno, you know, from like, you know, that's not necessarily the best form of the Sambo. So I think that, mm. you know, I think, OK, well, I'll just I'll move this. Here, I'll move this here. And I think it's been really interesting for me having this kind of canvas of technology you know logic pro is the program i often use and so yeah. i i think well here are here are five rhythmic elements and how can i place them in in, in interesting ways that you know, the computer will tell me are wrong but i know are not wrong <laughs> and and actually you know listening to music all around the world from moroccan street music to huanyo music from bolivia or you know jay dilla the the classic uh, detroit based hip hop producer of the early 2000s or even the, the viennese waltz you know these are all kind of things that sway and move and they bend and stuff and mm. and i think it's just it's really important to remember that music is not designed to be rigid and and that's definitely true for, for live performance and so you know i mentioned i, I toured for the, the first two years of my touring with this one man show and everything was kind of based on a click track because otherwise it's impossible to do any looping and the yeah. idea was that i'd walk around the stage and i'd loop the bass and i'd go and play four bars on the drums and then i'd play two bars on the percussion but four times so it would last eight bars and then i go to the keys and all this kind of like matrix of, of memory and and it was all with this click track going all the way through and there was something brilliant about it because there was a, a, a kind of there was a rigidity about it that made me be creative um and it made me think about the constraints and stretch them and also it made me engage with my audience because i didn't have the the musicians to engage with in the same way but i i sort of concluded that 
that one man show, the, the the one man show whirlwind world tour number one with mm. this kind of yearning for the actual human contact having designed technology that was tr that was trying to be as human as possible it's like there's actually nothing you can do to replace the feeling of sort of stepping into the unknown with somebody else rather than just with your own kind of um probability based <laughs> system <laughs> for being infinitely surprising and imperfect and all this stuff and that was that was nice to realize because you know i think that i i live in this world in my own creativity where i sort of feel like i can i can make almost a anything possible by thinking about it for long enough but actually some things don't work that way and i think that's really nice to just to remember and, and you know when i went on the road in 2019 for a year with with this this four piece band it was a really amazing kind of transition i suppose from being on my own to to kind of extending the one man show to a a, a, a four man show as it were and thinking well we can actually we can still do this kind of matrix way of 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 thinking and we can organize the sections in these interesting ways or whatever but we can also just have have a ball and we can have fun and i think that it's important to park the the, the tech at a certain point and enable the kind of humanity to to take over but I, I do think that especially in this year with so much tech and with so much reliance on the tech it's it's both crucial and possible mm -hmm. to make decisions that leave space for human beings to actually be human you know whether it's a music production or even in sort of zoom conversations and things i think there are ways to approach them which aren't kind of just same old same old or, or, or something absolutely it's it's really interesting and i mean just to go back to well i don't mean go back but when i'm thinking about you playing the multitude of instruments that you do play um so not talking about the technical side or the digital aspects for for a moment and you know when when you're learning a new instrument does the word practice come into your vocabulary or are you are you actually hearing something in your head that you would like to achieve from that instrument and then you you fiddle around you know with that instrument until you get it or are you thinking right i'm going to learn that particular instrument and i'm going to spend you know x amount of time practicing exercises or or uh, um, chords or or melodies or whatever which which way around or is it a bit of both or or something completely different uh, it's, a, it's a really good question uh i i've always been a really horrific kind of practicer uh in, in it just interestingly enough i i've i find with a with a new instrument that i can usually kind of hear the thing i i suppose it's it's the the, the former really I, I can hear i can hear a thing i want to achieve for example with a guitar despite mm. not really being a, a guitarist i, I can sort of think well, like i know what i know what i want to achieve but but that's not enough you have to spend time with the instrument and figure out Kind of what what it lends you or what what it, what it's what it lends itself to so you know for example with the guitar uh, i you know i'm someone who's kind of a piano player by thought you know i think in the, in the piano a lot and it's it's kind of like my native my, my my most native tongue musically other than perhaps the voice and so and so i don't i didn't think for example with the guitar before actually picking one up that <laughs> you know sort of hammer-ons and, and pull-offs and things are so can be just so expressive and bends and stuff like this i sort of thought well here are the notes and i've got the notes in my mind but you know instruments have dialects and they all kind of speak the same language but instruments have dialects and i think part of my job as a multi-instrumentalist is to kind of figure out what those are like what those dialects are and how i can get inside them um and operate within my own musical landscape it, with this with this thing that has a different kind of energy or a different kind of form and i really would not describe myself as someone who's sort of mastered any any you know any instrument really but there are some I'm more literate on than others. I mean, I, I'm 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 literate enough on the piano to sort of get around all keys pretty comfortably, and I, you know, I I sort of I can I can define or describe most sounds uh, that I can visualize on the piano in some way in my sort of emotional vocabulary, which is really helpful. Um, but but I think that nowadays I I sort of I I think about a new instrument as an opportunity to kind of stretch the way that I think things can come out and the way that things can be possible. And I recently fell in love with this instrument called the harpeggi. And I don't know if you've seen a harpeggi before. Oh, I don't a, think so. It's just an amazing, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll go get it. Oh, please. Um, it's just, it's an incredible, it's, it's, it's a 16 string <gasps> instrument. Wow. Basically it's tuned in tone. So it sort of goes. And, Look and, at and that. You, you play it by hammering on. Jacob. Can you bring your face down a little bit so that I can see you? Oh, yeah. That's there it. You Brilliant. Yeah, Thank you. Cool, cool, cool. That's amazing. 
yeah it's it's a beautiful thing and um it was invented actually pretty recently by um this guy tim meeks who's who lives in dc and he he sort of said hey jacob i'd like to give you this and i said well okay that's really kind of you so wow. i went home and i spent a sort of, well, actually this was last christmas i spent the whole christmas just figuring out what this language was and obviously the language is so different from guitar and piano it, it's based i guess it's based more like a guitar because it's got frets in the up and down direction but yeah. it's a it's a bit like a it's a bit like a piano in the sense that the, these black things here are black keys and, and stuff so so you kind of learn how to visualize it and all the shapes that you um that you learn for you know a major triad minor, minor triad and voice leading and stuff it all complete is completely unique and mm. i was so thrilled to to discover this because i i know i know what voice leading is and can do and how mm. to manipulate it to a point but the harpeggi really kind of lent me a whole new way of thinking about it um which i really appreciated so I, i'm always on the lookout for what you know a, a, a new system that that could you know where, where I, I'll, I'll discover something kind of brand new about the way i can look at something that i already know i can almost imagine um you know in being a a, a student going through a music course or, or degree where okay one term you're going to uh pick an instrument that you've never played before or mm. a bit of technology that you've never explored before and just yeah. say right off you go and and create yeah. a sound meal from it and and see what happens and I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I i suppose that that the idea of you know, giving equal emphasis to improvisation, exploration, and reading music, listening to music, participating in music, you know, all of those are just seem to be uh, like this wonderful circular, um, how can I put it, ball for you, you know, where it's all mm. equally important. And it, there's a big lesson there, I think, for young players, and indeed, players like myself, much older ones. Um, I mean, th thank you. I, I think, I reckon, you know, for me that, well, for, for everybody, there's a, there's a slightly different balance between, you know, what what's important with practice and what's important with play. And I, I sort of happen to fall in the sort of play category. And mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't say that, you know, you can achieve every single thing via play. And some things you do have to sort of sit, sit down and think about. But I think for me, I've done so much practice, which hasn't felt like practice at all. It's felt like play, because I've just been so interested in the problem that I'm trying to solve that I don't think of it as something rigid. I, I, I don't think of like, well, now the practice session begins and on goes the sort of stopwatch and the mm. metronome comes out and I sort of have to, whatever. It's it's more along the lines of, well, I sh I've got 45 minutes. I don't have to do, I don't have to do any homework, you know, this afternoon. So, so, so how do I play this voicing in every key, you know, and, or how do I, how do I solve this weird, this weird problem? And, and so I, I think my method of learning has been to stretch, to take something I know and to, to expound it, to stretch it. And I think the nice thing about that process is that you can do it at any time in your entire life. You can do it if you're two or three years old, because there are some things that you can hold and you can touch and you know. And if and children will say, "Hey, what happens if you break it? What happens if you pull this apart?" Or, you know, and then how do you put it back together again? And a lot of the mm -hmm. the learning process as a as a baby, as a very young child, comes from that process of thinking, "Well, here's a thing. I'm going to break it just so I understand its properties, yes. and then I'm going to put it back together again." And musically, I think I've I, I'm do, I've done that for you know 20, 25 years, and I'm still. I'm still doing it now and, and you know for mm. example recently I sort of tore apart the the equally tempered system a little bit and started thinking about you know notes that were not in tune with the piano because they were in tune with just intonation or in tune with other other systems of tuning and that's really interesting to me because you know not, you know not not because it's a kind of stuffy old concept that sits and gathers dust in a library you know some some person some yeah some revolutionary thinker kind of had a theory and then that's the end of the story it's, I think for me, it's like, you know, take, if you take microtones, for example, you know, microtones apply to songwriting and they apply to arranging in ways that really are not abstract at all. They're just logical. It's like, well, if I'm if I'm on a G and I've got four notes between G and C, then I can split G and the C into four notes instead of three. And I can go do, 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 do. And that's fine, you know. And I, I've loved just um, finding ways to, yeah, to, to solve problems that, that kind of destroy or, or um alter something that i feel like i know for sure because i think the moment you know something for sure you should stop you kind of stop learning it so <laughs> i always i always try and stay on the edge of something that i that i'm certain about in, in terms of music and think well but how can i look at this in a way that is not legit you know how could i how could i get a, a voicing for this chord that 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 defies my expe my, my expectation even further than mm. i've done so before and so i'll take something i know I'll move something around until it until it's unrecognizable. I say, well, great, that's it. That's that's the that that's the thing I want to spend time with. And I'll 
I'll figure out what that says emotionally, what that can do. And once I figure out what it can do, then I start to use it. And it's almost like this instantaneous thing where I'll just, if I'm interested in something, it will come out and I'll start using it. And I'm not afraid to use it and, and try something, mm. even if I have no idea what it's going to do or, or what I'm doing. But that's mm. almost like my, I, I consciously think about doing that to my own, to myself, to my process and thinking, well, here's something that will make me think about something in a totally different way. You know, one thing I often do, for example, when I'm composing or arranging is I think, well, what would Jacob definitely not do here? <laughs> and then, you know, well, I'll do that then. And I'll, I do that and I, I think, well, actually, I hate it or I love it or I think it has potential or actually I'm, I, I'm just angry with it or whatever. And, and it's really amazing to think, well, yeah, I, let's let's see what kind of reactions these choices have, especially if they're in, inverted. So it's inverting your, your intention or your choice. And and I yeah I consciously try to to kind of you know if if I've done something once before I I'll I'll try not to do it again because it, it just loses steam especially when I'm on my own you know if you're with somebody else and you're working with somebody else you can do the same thing a few times and the joke's always funny or whatever but I think with with someone like me and I'm I'm so in so in, impatient with with the process sometimes I think it can be a, an interesting realization that you can't really make the same joke twice you have to <laughs> rephrase it or throw in a different character or switch something up or, or change the resolution or, or whatever it is and obviously a, a joke is, is an analogy to you know whatever musical decision you happen to be working with at one time. And I think what's interesting in what you're saying is is that we're so used to almost getting permission from other people um, as to whether you know something is working not working or, or yeah. what, what someone else thinks and even in the whole teaching aspect of, of something you know we do something and we wait for a reaction but you know your whole upbringing and 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 your your professional journey is all about in a way listening to yourself as you say well what does Jacob think you know so yeah. and going through every aspect um, analytically or emotionally um, you know physically no doubt because the the dexterity of what you do is quite extraordinary the speed that you dash from one area to another and being absolutely you know spot on where, where everything needs to be is that's an art in itself and it's it's there's a lesson there you know listen to yourself and I think you're asking us to um, or allowing us to be aware of, of, you know, experimentation or playfulness or whatever is is about zooming into something, but then zooming out, letting mm. it, you know, kind of go to bits, as it were, and then zoom back in again. So bringing it all in so that it, it becomes part of you, an extension of you. And when something's so genuine like that, everyone else just feels, wow, <laughs> that's amazing. We feel <laughs> oh, something too, but fantastic. in our own way, rather than you saying we should feel this or we should feel that. So we don't feel hostage to feeling something has to be felt in a certain way. So Right, right. No, you're, you're, you're so right. And I think it, it, it comes down to, for example, technique. If you think, well, what's, what's your technique for a skill or an instrument or a process or how do you approach this or whatever? And it's like, mm. you know, certain certain people in my life I can I can think to and I can I can remember them sort of saying well this is how it's done and you know you do it like this and sometimes that's helpful it's like but actually how how do I play in half position on on the double bass and I remember you know my my, my friend Darren saying well it's like this you know you put your thumb here and it's it's like oh, thank you <laughs> that's really helpful um, mm. and then and then you know so so there were, there are parts you know parts of things like that I remember with the piano where it was like hey you can actually put your thumb underneath your fingers as you're playing a scale you'd have to hop <laughs> hop up and down the key of the keyboard which i did until i was about 16 actually just hopping everywhere um so oh th thanks for that it's really helpful uh but then i think the real the realization that I've, I've had is that you know no one really knows the best way to do everything always and no one really knows mm. what they're doing and and mm. that that's not to say that people don't do things brilliantly and that there aren't methods but mm. i think that there's always there's always space for people to bend things to to, to suit their own particular approach and you can mm. take something that is you know that that does exist, or some something that somebody else has done. You know, within the jazz world, you can say, "Well, I'm going to transcribe a Keith Jarrett solo or a B, uh, you know, eleven solo per day." And and I I remember ha having to do this when I when I studied jazz in in my late teens, and it was like you have to transcribe a solo and then play it note for note. And and something about that was was really good sort of discipline for me because I would my first instinct my my first instinct is just to edit the solo to you know be what I like instead of <laughs> what they really played. And but it's nice to sort of get inside someone's time. But I think at the end of the day if you're building yourself a language whether it's a musical composition language harmonic language technical language um whatever it is um, communication style it, it's it's really cool 
to mm. say, well, okay, I, I get that this is this is a thing that's done, and then and I'm I'm just going to bend this and bend this, and and you know, as long as I un- as long as I understand where that comes from, it's it's fine, and and so. You know, there are you know certain musicians. I would say someone like Bobby McFerrin is is one who who <laughs> inspires me not to do it like him, but who inspires me to do it like me. And I think if there's one thing that I would I would hope to inspire, it, it's that. It's not like do it like Jacob does it. It's it's do it like you do it because yeah. no one else. It, it's your responsibility to in some ways. No one else is is going to be able to possibly explain how you see the world and how you operate. You know, and so it, it, you, you you have to do that for us. You know. Yeah, it's a really, really interesting point because I was going to ask, you know, what do you think people would be doing with your music in 250 years' time? I say 250 years hmm. because, of course, we're celebrating Beethoven's uh, That's right. birth, aren't we? And and yeah. we're all, you know, finding ways to, um, I suppose, find other paths to connect with Beethoven's music. You know, right. at the moment we're focusing on his hearing and and how that may have influenced certain choices that he made and so on. But, um, and I wondered if you delved into any of Beethoven as regards to your recent work, whether that's something you've maybe thought about, but more perhaps importantly is, you know, how do you think people may um, manipulate um, or engage with um, or be influenced by your music in, let's say, two, 200, 300 years' time. Yeah, I, let's hope human beings are still still around. Robots. There you go, yeah. <laughs> it's a funny old thing to think about, I think, as someone who's kind of living and making stuff, uh, you know, in, in the present. Um, you know, I think it's really easy for people to kind of, especially on, on the surface level, to sort of, you know, extract, you know, the, the 10 things about Beethoven that, Mm. kind of you know the sort of top 10 beethoven things like he, the hearing and the and you know this aspect and this aspect and this aspect of his musicianship his composition style his structures and what he stretched from what was before him and what he inspired and stuff like that but mm. i i think honestly it's if you'd asked beethoven that question i i'm not sure he would have been able to see um where we would be with him and what we would have remembered and it probably wouldn't have been the things that he would would have wanted to be mm. remembered necessarily because it's funny how you know an artist's work always tends to be kind of the, the the sum of its the sum of its surface level parts to 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 the masses at, at a certain point which is it in some ways is, is, is natural but um, mm. i think you know for someone like beethoven i would imagine that he was probably most interested in the stuff that he was about to do at, at all times or at least that's how i feel about myself i'm always i'm always way more in, inspired and sort of enthused about the thing that i haven't done yet but i want to do next and so sometimes i have this sort of unsettling feeling that like all there is out there is the stuff i've already done and it's like no oh, i need to ca- i need to catch people up on whatever so I, I don't know if i'm the right person to necessarily ask that question to but i guess what i would hope is that um you know I, i'd hope that people maybe look at what i'm doing and, and what i have done and what i'm maybe about to do and and think well you know that was something which belonged to the time it was being made in and and uh it, you know it, it's someone someone who made things possible for for other musicians who perhaps didn't see it as possible before uh mm. and you know that that's not to sort of make any particularly grand claims about the things i'm making but you know i i love for example taking a musician like uh catherine Tickell, who's a northumbrian pipes player oh yes England, she's wonderful who, who i adore so much and and this this rock guitar legend Steve Vai, who's a, just a champion, sort of like mm. you know huge hero figure for for many guitarists around the world, and mm. and they, they they play in 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 thirds on a song of mine on Jesse Volume Two called uh, Do You Feel Love. They they actually play in harmony with each other, and that was such a cool feeling for me because I love both of their styles. But they would never have they they would probably never have crossed paths in that particular way had I not sort of opened that that door of fascination into my own mind I thought well what if that's possible you know what if mm. that's what, what would happen if I just xyz so I, I love those experiments and I hope that maybe some of the results of those experiments will encourage people to be a, just a little more fearless about what they deem possible and 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 stuff but mm. but but yeah really I think that if I'm doing something that feels me and that feels authentic then there's never any reason to be ashamed or 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 um kind of uh yeah about about what i'm about what i'm making i think it's a it's a very interesting kind of uh kind of question it's like well what what in what's in what in what you do is the most valuable and i wouldn't say yeah. it's it's the best music or the most popular music or whatever i think it's the music that's the most jacob 
and I think I would hope that the 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 Jacobness of it is what will maybe shine through and it's like this person was you know this person was so themselves and so maybe I can maybe I can be myself as well and and so it's you know it's less about kind of like how can I take this exact harmonic sequence or blah or you know this set of skills or this set of whatever and, and apply it to 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 my own music although that's that's fantastic and that's that's superb but mm. I think that for me the most important thing and and the thing I would say that I've taken as the highest inspiration from the people that have come before me is man Stevie Wonder was so Stevie Wonder here you know that's like such a Stevie thing to do that you know and I, I love noticing those things and and f just feeling the person behind it and so I, I would hope that that's something that is felt and and you know remembered or responded to or kind of welcomed in the years to come absolutely and and I mean it just seems that um, every project you create, and I mean, I've got so many things I'd like to ask you, which I'm never going to be able to, to uh, you know, ask you in the time that we have, unfortunately. But, you know, I'd love you to, to talk a little bit about uh, your program, Je your, your project, sorry, um, Jesse, and, hmm. you know, how that all came about, because that's a pretty mammoth project, really. And, of course, the four Grammys that you have achieved and and what awards mean to you you know did mm. that ignite something in your creativity um after you received those interesting um well i would say just on on the on the grammys i i would say uh they they make good a go go bells that was my, my first fascination <laughs> but um i would oh, i would also funny. say i mean the, the award itself it, it's it's so <laughs> arbitrary and and you know it's just a bunch of people who think that they know what they're saying who decide that you know i'm the best at something and so you know on the one hand i just think it's such nonsense and i i would never really at least i would hope i would never be sort of aiming to for that to be the high point is like all the awards and stuff but yeah. you know it was it was a tremendous moment well i guess the the, the two moments i sort of won two one year and two a few years later or well, this year actually crazy it feels like a long time ago but <laughs> january um, mm. and, and I think there's something amazing that happens about how much people trust you in, in the music industry. And mm. they sort of say, well, oh, if you've got if you've got Grammys, then I, you must, you know, then then, you know, yeah, kind of go go ahead, you know, do do, do the thing you're, do, you know, do the thing you're doing without having to maybe defend it as much as I, I had to at the beginning. If I'm doing something, people saying, well, I don't know if this is really how it's done. I don't think this is mm. very legitimate, you know, whatever it is that people would, would be feeling. And I think it's a it's a really rewarding thing to kind of bring those Grammys back home to this room and sort of think, well, I never compromised anything I was trying to do. I just want, I just did the thing I felt was absolutely right. And mm. that's really all I can do. And mm. I think when that's recognized by whatever institution is of value to the world at this moment in time, it's a, it's a, it's a really lovely kind of feeling. I, I guess it, 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 it made me relax a bit. It's like, oh, okay, th thank, thank goodness. I don't have to kind of just, I don't have to, maybe push so hard um to yeah. convince people that what i'm doing is has a story or is a is mm. something which is you know unique or whatever and then and then it has its all its inbuilt problems about you know i'm I'm working on a on a vocal arrangement right now and i can't help but think well i, I hope it's a i wonder if it's a grammy thing or i hope it what it, and, and you yeah. sort of think well yeah it, it, it is a little toxic actually when you, when you start thinking about it and and it is mm. never like you it's not like the grammys is a, is a thing that is any conclusion it's like well then the next year you're you're just with everyone again and so i think this it's a bit of a myth that you know you, you sort of you're you're bestowed a thing and then suddenly you, you've completed everything because i think that for me you know it it, it kind of adds to the to the ever mounting sort of you could say external pressures of the world of music about you know what i'm capable of doing or what i what the what i you know what what i owe people or you know what mm. people what only i am able to do for the world or all, this, all these kinds of things and suddenly it's like everything is very significant but one thing I love about lockdown is that I think I've really remembered how little of a reason there is for us all to be making music. There's not a great big destination. It's not like, oh, now I'm going to get to the end and then it will be worth it. You know, it's, that's just not true. I think, you know, when you're running around the world and touring and teaching or whatever it is you're doing, mm. um, or even if you're just, you know, if you're in one place and you're working really, really hard, you know, to yeah. try and get something you're doing off the ground or you're trying to communicate a set of things you're organizing for a particular event, a concert or a with a group of students or anything it's like it feels like at the end of the thing that you're talking towards there'll be a big reward and i think that this it's galling and relieving to realize that there is no big moment where everything is enough and everything is enough for mm. you and you've done enough for everyone else it's it's not possible and so i think i've really discovered a sense of peace 
that I'd, I'd kind of lost touch with a little bit about just about the point of it all not being that it means this to this person and it means this to this person and it represents this now to, it's just that I'm making it yeah and that's the point I'm, I'm just making something and that's wonderful absolutely and I think with with the the in a way the kinds of people that you're collaborating with I mean they're all very much comfortable within themselves and they they continually uh, you know create groundbreaking things they're always pushing the barriers they're always asking that question of what if you know they're, they're yeah. seeking something else creatively um, no matter how many awards or or uh, um, you know recognitions they've they've had and i think that yeah. is the sign of a very um uh, it, it, you mentioned trustworthy you know people trust what you do and it, yeah. it there's a kind of coziness to that i think um yeah. it's funny because it's, it's a coziness on the one hand in the sense it, that it's comfortable but it's also it's it's like being willing to be not cozy that makes it special you know it's like mm. saying i'm not going to stay where where i am in my little no. of my thing but which i i'm not saying that you were implying by the way but I, no I do but think yes that, i see what you mean yeah it's like you know somebody for example like laura mavula who i just adore she's an amazing musician so it was soul singer from from england and so unbelievably unique and mm. and having spoken to her you know she's she, she sort of had all these all these accolades all these collaborations and things but she's just so thirsty and so yearning for the for the next thing what can i do next and whatever and, mm. and and i i honestly think that you know people who are committed to to moving around and 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 changing the face of the way they understand things those are the people that i think i respond to the most and you know if if, if we're talking about sort of trust i think that it, it's it's like a, it's, it's a lens thing i guess it's it's yeah. it's figuring out how to present the world to people in a way where they learn that seeing the world through your eyes is something that they can learn something from or they can learn something about themselves from rather than kind of what you it's like rather than what you see through the lens being the the result the, the destination it, it's the lens itself which becomes the you know the, the, mm. the kind of art of the thing and and you know ac across the whole of these these four volumes of, of jesse all these different collaborators have a different lens you know you've got ty dollar sign who's a kind of like you know such a a beast within the sort of pop and, and rap hip-hop world and then you've got you know, you've got someone like Umu Sangare, who's a, just a legend of, of Malian music and just an incredible legendary African musician. Uh, then you've got Leanne La Havas mm -hmm. or Take Six. Um, or, you know, you've got someone like uh, like Mahalia or Tori Kelly, these amazing singers. And then you've got Sam Amidon, the, the fiddler. And, and then you've got the, the, the Metropole Orchest and, and Voces 8, you know, these people who are based in, in the, the, the world of classical music. And, and the lens through which they see the world of music is is different from mine and it's different from the other collaborators on the album and my my kind of joy of the whole thing it, it is is what has been and, and continues to be to kind of form a convergence between you know my outlook and and theirs so that maybe we can build a bridge between something that i know and something that they know uh, and and find a way to have something in common which i think is just something that music is so good at doing you know it's like look look what look what we have in common you know look we're all people mm. or look we're all musicians or we all have emotions or we all kind of we all move together or sing or dance together or you know we all respond to something and that to me is a is a fascinating thing and i i, I consistently find myself moved and kind of motivated and, and, and you know and, and inspired by by seeing all these different kinds of musicians kind of with the same thing that's driving them forwards which is just just to be them like just to be themselves and to to, to seek the thing that makes them themselves and to and to to reach as many people as possible with with whatever that essence is and it's a really courageous thing to do you know you sort of spend your life as an artist or at least i know i do so it's just going up and down up and down with all these different levels of kind of i can do everything or i can't do anything or i know exactly what i'm talking about i don't know what i'm talking about at all and and you know and and that being a, a, a public process where people are sort of watching you and commenting on and having opinions and all this stuff and i i think it's it's you know it's it's not something that there's a, a one size fits all solution for but i think people who are willing to kind of i, I guess as, as you say be, be cozy in their lack of stasis be comfortable in their ability to morph and change shape um but to stick to their guns and kind of do things the way that that, that, that they want to do them and, and learn what they can from the people around them i think those are the people that that drive me forwards to create and, and therefore people that have inspired me to make the music that i do and alongside them for good measure Jacob, you could just go on and on and on forever.
I, you know, I just love you to chat away there all day long. It's it's just, you know, what you give is is something very, very crucial, not just to musicians, not just to creative artists, but to to all of society, no matter where they're planted on this earth. You you really have, and you're all about building bridges, um, which is is massively inspiring. And I just really absolutely from the bottom of my heart want to say thank you so much for giving this time um i've been really really looking forward to meeting you and um I, you know i just can't quite find the words to express you know my thanks for everything that you're doing because it's just incredibly inspiring so um thank you so much indeed mm-hmm.